Hi everyone, today I'm talking about multi-criteria decision making and special multi-criteria decision making when we have problems of special nature. This is going to be a multi-part lecture and these are the different topics that I'm going to talk about. First, I will give of course a little bit of introduction about decision making and decision making when there are more than one criteria to take into account. I'm going to discuss elements of multi-criteria decision making. Those include goals or objectives. Those also include criteria as well as alternative when we have multiple alternatives to choose from. Okay. Then we'll talk about multi-objective which is also called MODM, so multi-objective decision making versus multi-attribute decision making. Most of the time you will see that we are dealing with multiple attributes. And when we talk about multiple objectives, this is a topic that we have talked about in spatial optimization. Next, we'll talk about individual versus group decision making. So sometimes you make a decision for yourself, sometimes a decision has to be made by different stakeholders. Okay, so how do we uh, agree on, on the, some preferences. Next, we'll talk about criterion weight, and this is a quite an important uh, subtopic. Um, what type of weights to give to all of those uh, different attributes that we were talking about earlier? Uh, what if we were to um, rank those different criteria? What if we were uh, to compare those different criteria in order to um, um, <coughs> derive weights? We we'll also talk about sensitivity. So what happens if I increase a weight versus decreasing another one? And also the importance of standardizing those weights uh, or those criteria rather so that they are of course uh, comparable. Lastly, we'll talk about spatial decision support system, which is a particular uh, component of decision support system. Let's start with a little bit of introduction about decision making. So every day we are making decisions. Some are very simple, such as, you know, in the morning, what should we wear? What should we eat? Which store should we go shop? Or what movie should we watch on TV? Okay. Generally, those decisions that we make do not have any formal analysis. Okay. So uh, or at least do not require a lot of thinking, right? So when we say, for instance, what do we eat? We might see what type of food we have in the pantry, maybe what the kids like to eat, and based on that, we can make a dinner or we may decide to go to the store, okay? But again, those decisions do not really require a lot of thinking. What about a lot of those non-everyday activities? So those decisions that we need to take every now and then, right? But of course, they may happen maybe every year, every day. And I just list here a few examples, such as a house, for instance, buying a house, renting an apartment, right? So when students, for instance, come to campus and I have to rent an apartment, what sort of, uh, what goes into this decision making? What sort of criteria or attributes are important, such as maybe the rent, the proximity to the university, proximity to grocery stores, and so on. When you go to college, you may list the different colleges or the different universities you would like to attend. Or if you buy your, you're buying your first car, you know, you may think about it and try different cars. So there are different uh, this, the different cr criteria that comes into play uh, and this is a non-trivial of course uh, decision as opposed to the one we're talking about later uh, earlier sorry and then of course we may have um, decision problems uh, that involve um, something that happens spatially and this is as I had mentioned in the class earlier um, those could be location problems so where to locate let's say a landfill where to locate uh, maybe a new school Right. Um, so those decisions typically have also different attributes or different constraints uh, and they may involve more than one decision makers. The decision making process right, is made of at least two different alternatives. Okay? Otherwise, there is no decision that needs to be made. Okay? Those decisions are typically made thinking in the short term or in the long term. So for instance, when you decide what to wear, what to eat tonight, uh, which uh, uh, store to go to shop, right? Those are decisions that don't require a lot of thinking. Uh, I've mentioned this earlier. However, long-term decisions, such as buying a car, an apartment, a house, and so on, are decisions that require a lot of thinking, right? And you don't make that decision typically overnight, so quickly. So you're generally going to weigh different alternatives. A decision-making problem can really be thought about three different components. The first one is, what is a problem calling for making a decision? The second is, 
what are decision alternatives and what are my options, right? And the third one is which alternative is the best? And to answer the third one, typically we have different attributes uh, that we are going to wait until we find a solution that fits um, our preference or belief.